All right, we're going to shift gears for a little bit. Uh, track is ready to be installed, both sections. So we'll get to that in a little while. We can go install them. But first, so a friend of mine brought this SD40 in the shop, and it didn't work. And what I noticed right away was the trucks had been put in backwards, and there was a hard wire on them that just plain shorts it. So, remove the motor. We're going to put the new Revolution 1 motor in this. But first, let's do some truck assembly, shall we? Um, I've already done the wheels. They've all been put in gauge. I graphited the ends. Coated them with OxGuard. And they are ready, ready to go. I've already picked teams, right? You mash them all up, then you lay out the parts. And both teams got to have the same parts on both sides here. So let's go ahead first. Let's go ahead and start with the worm gears. All right. And what we want to do on the worm is we want to take some air tool oil and see if we can. Oh man. See if we can get some out here. Okay. So we take a dot on our little screwdriver. And we're going to put it next to the bronze bearings on both ends. This one we'll just take him off for a second. I want just a little bit of air tool on there. Okay. Air tool oil is a good long-term protecting oil that uh, it doesn't wear out and like I've said many times before unlike mineral oil you got to be careful about using three-in-one because that's mineral oil and it will wear out after a while under constant use it wears out and so you, you, you don't want to use mineral oil and you don't want to use a detergent oil because it will spread everywhere and air tool oil is the perfect stuff for that. Okay, there's that one. Wait, did we just do this one? Why do I feel like we're doing this twice? All right, worm's ready. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to use our mag one, high temp. Break bearing grease, good stuff, red lithium, and it does not spread, as you know, that's why we use it, and it stays good basically forever. Well, at least it stays good for something like 30, 40 years, which is good to go. So let's take some gears, and fortunately on this one, there's only two different kinds of gears. There's one idler, whoops. Yeah, check them. If there's a registration mark, we want that facing up. Well, this one doesn't have a registration mark. That's unusual. Okay, now these little gears, they got kind of an inside and outside. We are going to put the, the outer one. We're going to put the outer one, and when you look at them, you'll be able to tell. We're going to put the outer one down. It's important to get them all the same. And get those moved like that. You don't need much, just a little bit in there. It'll work its way around. Okay, then we will go ahead and let's get a little grease in here and run them around a little, a little bit. We don't need a lot, we just need a little bit. Okay, about like that. Uh -huh. Run around, smooth out any globs. Good to go. Do the other one. Hmm. 
Okay. So when you're looking at it, it's like, oh no, how am I going to get this back together? I don't remember. Pick teams. They only go one way. And on SD40s, they, um, they're really easy because there's only two kinds of gears and one of them is the idler. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and give them some grease. I put the grease right in the corners here so I can get them. Just like that. And it will spread just where it needs to be. Smooth out the lumps. All right, there we go. Now let's go ahead. I forgot to do something, didn't we? We did. We were gonna do something. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take we're gonna take a little file here, and as you know, the wheels have that phosphor bronze nut in there and they sit down into these sockets. I just want to make sure that those sockets are totally clean and clear. So I'm just going to just a little bit just to make sure that they are not rusted or oxidized because this spring steel will rust. That is why I gave it a coating on the outside. I used the Zep graphite on that. Remove any oxidation. I did clean all these parts in the ultrasonic using Jungle Jake. And I'll say the difference between Jungle Jake and Mean Green is Jungle Jake has a very strong, almost like an essential oil kind of smell to it. So I don't know if that's a special property of it, um, but it does work really good. We're just going to clean these sockets. So that they are nice and conductive. I'm probably going to make this into one long video. Yeah, it could be kind of long. It could be an hour or more. But anyways, there's that. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our ox guard. Little paintbrush. Now I've already, so the outside is sealed with the graphite. We're going to do some soldering and we're going to clean it and, and, and then we'll, we'll uh, protect it. But I want to do that. On each one of those sockets all right just enough ox guard because ox guard is on these nuts also but I want to make sure that uh, I'm protecting the steel here and our start will turn to a dry film and then it'll be sealed in no oxidation and the ox guard is very conductive will have excellent contact and right, it doesn't really matter if I get it anywhere else because it is turns to dry film eventually and we don't have to do anything any painting or anything but I am going to show you something about this shell and some of you will recognize right away what the deal is. All right. So did we get them all? We got this guy, didn't we? Uh, yep. Okay. All right. Complete. Now, let's go ahead and put them together. Like so. Drop in. Now, let's, before we drop in any wheels, Let's go ahead and lock them down with the little small caps. Okay. Got 
small caps locking down. All right, now we can put in some wheels. I'm gonna drop them in. Mm -hmm. There's one. And yes, I, I gauged them. So they are engaged. That's very important. It's one of the things that you gotta do every time. Because wheels come out of gauge. Okay, now let's make sure that we are lined up just right. I, these things might be directional. And that one looks like it's good. Okay, let's do this guy. Drop his wheels in there. We'll put some... Oh, we did but that won't matter. We've got enough grease in there. We don't need to add extra. Make sure they're not directional. Yep. All right. There we go. Trucks are ready. Let's just put them up here on the track. Oh, yeah. Nice and smooth. Now, our standard is that they should feel smooth. They should feel smooth. But they should not be free rolling. But they should feel smooth. If they're free rolling, they do not have enough grease. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's free rolling, right? Or not free rolling, that's smooth. We don't want free rolling. Free rolling is often a sign that oil was used, and we don't want to use oil because it spreads everywhere. And the wheels are all ox guard and everything, and now we're good to go. So now on this one. The big pad here at the front, that is the front of the locomotive on an atherin. These arms face you. They face this way. Okay. And they just sit down here on their... Oops. I bet I got it backwards. Okay. Let's try that again. They sit down on two... No. What am I doing wrong here? Okay. They sit down into... See this pad here? The, that pad is what normally conducts electricity. We're not going to do that. We're going to bypass that pad. We're going to put a wire there, and we're going to put a wire on here, and we're going to put a PC board on there. Okay. Then, we're going to make this thing 15-inch radius capable. That's what we want. Okay, so now we're looking good. We're going to set a couple of pads for height. And we're going to mount couplers to it. We'll do that later. Now let me show you this shell. I tried looking for this because I noticed something that it had this pilot here. Which, even though this fits on here just right, it is not right. See the coupler pad in there? Something is not right. Well, one, these tabs that normally go for the SD40-2 shell are up above. This thing should sit just a little bit lower. And then when I looked for it, this definitely, it looks atherin. It's newer. As much super glue on there. I'm going to stick this in the freezer and see if I can't just pop that super glue off. Stick it in the freezer and, and sometimes you can get rid of some of this glue stuff here. But a normal Atherin SD40-2 blue box does not have this full pilot here. It's usually cut off here. So we got to do something to this shell and that frame because this is the shell that we want on it. And we'll figure out a way to do that. We'll, we'll make that modification. And then the worms don't go on till later. So I'm not going to grease them now. And that's where we're at with this. Right at the moment. Uh, next up we're going to do a little. I think we're going to do some framework. Okay here's the motor. That came out of this blue box. Alright. So. I'm not putting this back in. But I am going to tune it up. 
and so I've taken out the brushes and the springs. These springs to me seem kind of strange. Um, they have an awful lot of coil in them. I mean, they got. Look at that. They have a lot of extra coil. Okay. And it seems to me that these should be phosphor bronze, but they're not. Eh, doesn't matter. This is, I think this is a more modern motor. So I'm going to do a couple things. Uh, one, we're going to go ahead and we need to get some air tool oil to these bearings right here. There's a phosphor bronze bearing in here. And we're not going to pull the flywheels. We can, but we're not going to. We don't need to. What we're going to do is we're going to get, I poured a little bit of oil onto this piece of aluminum and let's see well let's put a little more on there okay now if I can get a drop uh oh this is gonna be yes yes it is okay so when it's too tight like this I forgot we gotta do it this way what we do is we're gonna take a exacto 17 blade here we're gonna put the oil on here Okay, now, now we can get that oil down here, and we'll get it worked in there, and if you push, you can just barely see, see it in there, see that bronze bearing, I don't want to get the oil onto the commutator, I want to get the oil on that shaft that goes in that bearing, right there, okay, and then I want to do it on this side, since I have the the spring clips off, I got a little extra play. So we can get a little bit of oil right. And there is a thrust washer right in there. Yes, there is, as there should be. Okay. Oops. All right, then. I got just a little bit on the outside of that. All right, there we go. And then, now, that will be much better. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna do, there was a glob of solder right here, and we don't solder to the top of these anymore like the old days. Well, we do it differently. So let's get some flux. We're gonna use the rosin flux. Let us get we got solder, solder iron is up. Okay. Got some solder. Solder iron is up. I'm working on track has worn out this tip pretty fearsomely, but uh, it'll be good enough to continue to do what we're doing. We're going to clean it and we're going to tin it. Tip tin as good as we can. And it'll still take enough tin to do what we want to do. But it is getting pretty worn out. And we'll change it. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do. We're going to go ahead. We're going to take our moto tool here. Which is now caught in this cord. Okay. Okay. So now, I'm going to clean this off. Oh yeah, hold on. I did find, in doing track, I turn it down, I think I said this, I turn it down to the lowest speed, and I don't lose so many wires off of here, and I still get clean. But for this, I'm going to turn it up just a little ways, because I want to do some polishing. And on the top, it doesn't matter. I don't need a lot of polishing. I'm just going to polish off some of the crap. And where it matters is by this, this clip. See, one's a hook and one's kind of this sort of S shape. Where it matters is right here. Behind the S, you want that 
polished really good. Right in there. I want that polish and I want the outside of the S side polished really good. Right there. Those are the two spots I want really, really polished. This top, got it clean. We'll just leave. I got enough of that glob off of there. It's good to go. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and, as long as we're cleaning, let's just clean a little bit. Nothing fancy. A little bit cleaner. Okay, good on that one. Let's do the same thing on the bottom one. We need to get inside that S clip. And we need to get outside the S clip. And the bottom itself don't look that bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, close enough. Good enough. Now, these brushes that I took out. I'm going to look for the worn inside. Well, actually, I'm going to do it on both sides. I'm going to turn it back down to, down to low. And I'm just going to hit the ends of them. Okay. Just a little bit. both those guys okay now this spring here I don't really know about but I want to hit the top of the spring I want to hit the bottom of the spring And even though we're not going to reuse this, I want to send, I want to send it back to them so that this motor can be used in stuff because there's nothing really wrong with it. And there's nothing wrong. And then, okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to polish this right in here. All right, so let's give them a little bit of polish. Uh, surprisingly, doing this does not have that much of a great effect, but I like them to be clean when I'm cleaning them. Okay, clean. No, anyway, it's just it's clean. It's not critical. Well, if it's if it's like completely black then then you want to polish it because that's a sign that you get a lot of buildup okay good to go now a lot of people take this bottom one and they clip these I don't do that I take it over to the anvil I'm taking my ball peen hammer I'm just gonna flatten them because when we put we're not putting this back in here we're gonna set this one up for DCC because we're gonna isolate that more okay so if you're just going to put it back in using the standard motor mounts, I flatten these and then I paint this with liquid electrical tape. I used to use black electrical tape, which works fine, but I found that liquid electrical tape, that's the magic stuff. And, and we would put that in there if we were going to put this back in. But we're not. I'm going to flatten these so this whole thing is nice and flat again. And then we'll put it together and then we're going to bench test it. And it should be... It should be really good to go. Okay, now, well, no, we're not done. We're going to take this here, screwdriver. Now, these guys, the S part. I want to put some rosin flux for electronics right in there like that on both of them. Okay, this is where I'm going to tin. All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of solder. 
Not a lot, just a little bit. And I, I'm going to hold this with my hand because I don't want to, I'm not even going to use that much. It should get that hot. Just like that. Okay. Do this one. This is where I want my solder. All I want to do is tin it, just like that. Okay? That is where you solder. That's how you do it. And you'll see why later when we uh, set this thing up. That's it for the start of rebuilding this. Now I'm going to flatten this down, and then I'll show you how we wire it up in a little while. Okay, when reinstalling the brushes, what we want to do is we want to take these... And we want to take a little ox guard. We want to get this spot underneath. Just that spot right there. Which, when this is on here properly, it's going to go over the top of that spring. And same on the bottom. Okay, then on the springs, since we cleaned them, we're going to get just the top side. Never, ever get ox guard on or near a brush because OxGuard will dissolve a brush. Okay, so now, since we cleaned them, we drop them in just like that. I'm going to put in the, sp the spring with the OxGuard side up. Oops. Let's try that again. The OxGuard side Use the upside. Yep. And then what we do is we, oh, that's the bottom one. We go ahead and we hook and press just like that. Okay, bottom side. Same thing. We're going to take our box guard side. Okay. Take our brush. Drop them in. Ox guard side up. Hook. And there it is. Okay, now it's back together. So, what do you say? We give her a try. Um, let's go ahead and turn on the uh, bench tester. Let's get our clips out here. Got them set right now to four volts. As you can see right there. So let's go ahead and clip on. And we're going to put the black lead. Now, here's the thing. Since it's all conductive, let's get it on the end here. Get it nice and secure. Okay. Now, as you can see right here, it's drawing a quarter an amp at four volts. Now I'm going to turn up the voltage. Nine and a half. Let's just give them a second here. Now, if we break this in right, the amps used, which is that middle number, will drop a little bit. We're at about 0.3, but we're trying to make our way down to 0.29. Once it stabilizes at 2.9, it's going to, we should be able to get it drop to 2.8. Getting closer. And this can take a while. Usually I say it takes five minutes in each direction and both up like that. Oops. Darn. Damn it. Okay. It takes doing it vertically and horizontally and then it'll start to drop. That's kind of the break in. So that's where we are where we got at that. All right. A lot like the SD90s that we did. We want to modify this 
for 15 inch radius. Now, one of the things I noticed on these trucks is that if you can see here, my pointer. Okay, you see this ring? If I can get that to focus. Right there. That fits in down here in this kind of round socket. I noticed the other truck someone shaved it off. I don't know what they were trying to accomplish by that. I don't think it'll be a problem, but it's something we may have to account for later. All right, so let's get started on this. Now, do a little shaving there and there. Then I'm going to test it. I'm going to mark it. And then I'm going to widen this, 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 and this. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. Okay, now I'm going to test it, check it out, and if it's good to go, go ahead and widen the next two things. Basically, we're going to do what we did to the SD90s not too long ago. Okay, so we have the modifications made. Widened, widened, socket, um, has more free play in it now. And now we got to see, did it pass the test? Can we make 15 with this? We make 15 inch radius, that is, that is a part of this project. This one must make 15 inch radius. So, let's put this on the two trucks here and see. Now... Let's take a look at this blue box SD 40 2 frame. Do you see this little platform area of this part and see that little sort of a notch with a nub in it? That's the front. That's a headlight bracket. And this is where the cab sits. So, now knowing what we know, remember, these arms. When the locomotive is pointed to the right, these arms are facing to you. So we set her down, just like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to cross bridge 15. And remember what I said about the free rolling trucks? We don't have, we don't want free rolling, smooth rolling. But with this weight on here, we get a little bit of, of rolling. Not too much, just enough. No problem. Whoa, look at that. Got him rolled that far. Man, is that thing smooth right now. I'll tell you what. If if you do something like this and use that mag one, when you feel the way these things roll freely like this, um, not free rolling, where they where you really get a chance to feel how the grease is in the gears, it is so smooth. Oh, it feels good right there. That is a good. That is really good. And and no problem. We're, we're not even close on this 15. That is really pretty, pretty good. All right, so next up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set coupler height. Okay, to set coupler cut or coupler height on a one of these blue box locomotives, 
They have a, a bound, mounting pad that you know has a clip that goes over it and the coupler is underneath. But to do KD couplers, or couplers that have their own draft gear boxes, we use the KD gauge. And let's zoom in and see where it shows that we are supposed to be. Okay, the proper height is when the flat part of the backside here can slip just underneath this thing. And I happen to know from experience, you see how it's got a notch there? All I gotta do is mill it off so it's even with the, the narrow part. Then you gotta tap, you gotta drill it, and you tap it, and here's your, oops, Here's the set, oh man, it's getting faded. KD246 has has that, it's got the tap, and it's got the tap drill, and it has a clearance drill in it. 50 is the tap drill, 43 is the clearance. 43 will drill a hole that a screw would pass through. Um, 50 will drill a hole that you can thread with the tap. Now I got from the, Hot Wheels Redline store. I got one of these. The one that's in my tap and die set will not hold hold small things. But this this one that I got from the Redline store will. And there's the tap. So I'm going to put a hole in there and I'm going to tap it. So I'm going to go ahead. Now if you're going to do this and you're not going to use a milling machine or nothing, you're going to use a file. And you can go ahead and file it down and, be, and keep checking your work until you just slip under. And then you're right. And then, under here, happens to be a pilot hole. So we'll drill through that, and then we will tap it. And I think I've already got that drill bit, that, that 50. I've got in a pin vise here. Um, if you're doing a bunch of them, I suggest using the drill press. But basically, we'll drill that, and then we can go and tap it. All right, so, so far, we're looking like we're in pretty good shape. So here's the frame, and coupler pads are now the right height. Here's where the Rev1 motor's going to go. I did just a tiny bit of shaving on these four corners, so it would fit in there nice. And then I shimmed it. And I used some of this thin lead. Uh, it's some kind of printing press lead. And a friend of mine gave me a whole bunch of it. And it's nice because you can cut it. If I didn't have that, I would take the le standard lead wheel weights as always. And I would, would hammer them into this shape. The thin lead, you cut with, cut with uh, scissors. And it adds, a, it adds a little bit of weight. You don't have to use lead for a shim. You can use anything that gets it to the right height. Now I'll put some goop in there. Goop them in place. And I think we'll be ready to paint this frame. One of the things we're going to do I already did a little bit of it. But we're going to these fuel tanks always have this edge on them. The mold edge. So we're going to smooth that off. And then when we paint the fuel tank it, you won't see that that mold edge anymore. Now I've removed all of the body mounting little nubs on the side because they're not going to work with the shell that we're putting on here. Uh, that shell's been in the freezer for a couple of days and when I, when I take it out I think we're going to be able to get rid of some of that super glue that's on it. We're going to wire up the trucks. So one of the things I like to do is I like to take that copper clad PC board that looks like this, you get them in packs, I cut them down, and I make these tiny pads here. And I use a triangle file to cut a gap. So these then, I like to mount right on top of the arm. So then, what I can do, and I started doing this, this is, a, this is a copper wire here, and I got it soldered on to the top arm here. I'm gonna bend it around and I'm gonna solder it to this pad. So that way this pad is gonna have the, well the, the uh, oh no, did I put that down on the wrong side? Does it matter? 
Yeah, well, okay, I'm gonna move it over here. Anyways, I'll bend it around and I'll put it on the pad and that is where I can connect my wires to. Then, down here, right there, I've roughed this up with a file. I'm gonna put just a tiny, I'm gonna tin a tiny spot and then I'm gonna run a wire up to the top where this guy is right now. Now, now why, why don't I wanna wire take this wire and go down to here because then it could touch the frame and it's not insulated uh, so some, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of move that guy over here take a wire come around and up to the pad then I will have a truck especially in this ST, SD40 all the wiring will be contained within this arm space and the frame just sits down on top of it wires out of the way then I can use the pad to do the actual wiring up to where the motor is. So I'm going to fix this and then we'll uh, check it again. Okay, we got two fully wired up trucks here. We've got our insulating material also in and around the well. So, how does this work? As you can see from the arm, which is red rail, with a piece of copper wire up to the PC board, then down here with a flexible wire up to the PC board. Okay, well that bypasses the contact between this plate and the frame. So the frame no longer matters if it gets power or not. So what I'm probably doing is the spot in here, that's going to get graphited. All right, so there's our two trucks. Now, as you know, here's the front where the cab sits. When we put this on here, the proper orientation is arms facing me when it's pointed to the right. Just like that. There's the front. There's the rear. These arms are on the side that I'm on. That's your red red rail right there so we're ready to move on and i think we're about ready to uh, wire in the motor all right we've made it through the basics of the rebuild everything's nice and painted now this frame is going to get a satin finish around it uh because it's it's kind of new looking and in a while i'm going to take the shell out of the freezer and see if i can't get rid of some of that that super glue that's on there but otherwise we're making the 15 inch radius trucks are wired insulated excellent excellent shape couplers are set we're in very good shape right now so this will be the end of part one part two and go ahead and put in the new motor